Good afternoon, YouTube. This is 626-2012, yet again for another rant, part two. Um, God was just putting it on my heart to put something up here that needs to be said. Everyone talks about the Jews being right, the Seventh-day Adventists being a cult. Um, I'm not into any of the secularized religions, even Jewish. I'm into Christ and Christ alone. And I am so sick and tired of God's word being bastardized. And the word of God being adulterated and murdered and blasphemed and being taken out of context. I want to read something here in 1 Corinthians, New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And we're going to go from right here in um, verse 17. Um, it's a key scripture I want to start at. But I want to show you a couple things first. Is when Paul wrote this letter to Corinthians. He wrote in here in verse 1 through as greetings, his salutations. I want to read these to you. I'm going to read the whole chapter to you, and then I'll explain the verse that I'm keying in on. 1 Corinthians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and so Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf with the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. That in everything, verse 5, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. That's verse 6. Remember that one. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Verses uh, 7 here. So that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm, unto, confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom we were called unto the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there shall be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. I'll explain that judgment right there. That's a different type of judgment. That's not what we talk about when we say you shall not judge. That's a totally different type of judgment, and that bait falls into the line of the discernment. Knowledge, in the same knowledge. So that word judgment really means discernment. And that you got to focus on in verse 10 is it means in the same judgment or knowledge. Verse 11, for it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now say this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. <clears throat> is Christ divided? Verse 13, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the house of Stephanos, Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made none of, of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because, of the fool, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, and base things of the world. Oh, excuse me, I skipped a verse. Go back to 27. But God hath chosen the fullest things of this world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 
and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto wisdom, unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep my Bible up so I can't even see my screen, so I don't even know if I'm in the position of this camera properly because I'm looking at my um, computerized Bible. I've got my regular Bible, and I've confirmed this scripture already in, in 1 Corinthians. And like I said, my poor old Bible, I mean, everyone thinks that I'm kidding when I say this Bible's been battered. I mean, I've got so much written notes, writings on it that, I mean, I could spend days just on subjects I've highlighted, not even the subjects I haven't even highlighted yet. I mean, I don't even have 1 Corinthians marked in my Bible, chapter 1 marked. But I know that the Bible says it to be a certain way. And the key scriptures I was talking about and everything, and I've already confirmed it, and you can confirm it for yourself in your own 1 Corinthians, in your Bible. Uh, I'm not doing this to be mean. I'm not doing it out of anger or wrath or any kind of malice. I don't have any ulterior motive. I don't know who comes up with the idea that I would have an ulterior motive. But that's okay because you could read Matthew 5 and it'll tell you, blessed are you when they speak all manners of evil against you. Okay, blessed are you when they speak all manners of evil against you because then you know you're doing right because you're following God's will. Um, but it says right here, who do we baptize under? Under the name of Christ. It ain't me that baptizes you. It's God. We are just a vessel and people keep doing that. And that's why Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians and wanted to set that straight because none of it was done under the name of Paul. It was done under the name of Christ. Okay. And I love verse six because he says, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, which means the testimony of Christ, Christ saving you is proved in how you live. And how you handle debates. The Jews and the secularists love to debate and argue. And they like to challenge you. And that's not what God says to do. He says to know what you are to say in season and out of season. And he says to know means to study the word of God. And to come from the word of God. Not from your own thoughts but out of the word of God. And you continually use the word of God. And I like this one too. He says, and I know I explained it already and I broke it down there. Verse 10. He says, join together in the same mind in the same judgment, that part of the verse. And a lot of people think he means to judge. No, we come down with the same knowledge and the same discernment that Jesus Christ is Lord and that all need to be saved through Jesus to get to know the Father. And that uh, he says in here that he also noticed that there was um, arguments going on in the house of Chloe or the church of Chloe. And he says, every one of you saith, I'm, and he goes, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. See, this is what I was talking about. And people don't get that. Okay. Christ ain't divided. So we shouldn't have secularized churches, Baptist, Protestant, Jew, Gentile, uh, Enlightenment churches, um, Christ scientists, Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist churches. Uh, Baptist, I already said that. Uh, what's one of the others? Ecclesiastical churches, Episcopalian. Um, there's so many churches that are out here, secularized churches, and not one of them are of God. They're of man and man's contention against God. And his way of rebelling is subtle, but it is a misleading way to do with the word of God. He says in there, is Christ divided? No, Paul did not. Uh, Christ is never divided. Christ is the same, just like God is the same today yesterday and always they never divided christ man is divided amongst people and that's where they say it's acceptable because he says be you like-minded with one another and they try to say oh that's a good reason to have secularized churches or separate types of churches so we can associate with the people that agree with us that is not what god said we all got to be in the same mind it's got to be of god and if it ain't of god then it's a man and it is no longer a house of god that that's just been an irritation on me and i get excited because of it um over that alone <clears throat> lest i uh, anyone should say that i be i had baptized in my own name and see he he didn't he avoided baptisms because people would do that and he knew the carnal 
nature of man because God gave him the sermon to get to the sermon. Okay. But I like what he says here in 17, and this is the key scripture for right now. For Christ sent me not to baptize. He sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ, cross of Christ should be made none effect. So what we are to preach is the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The day of the Lord is coming. Are you right with God? For God so loved the world. That's the message God wants us to give. Not our own imaginations and our own vain babblings, but of the word of God. Okay? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So if, if we're preaching to a guy on his, on his deathbed, he's already had all his life and I hate it to say it, but it's very harsh and it's very brutal what Paul says here, but he's accurate in what he's saying. We're preaching to a guy that's dying. He's got less than a day left. He's dying. He has no chance to do the will of the Father, to bring others to Christ. Okay? To a fool. We're preaching. We throw our, we cast our pearls before swines. Everyone's heard that scripture. This is confirmation of that scripture, and it's confirmation of what I've been saying. And I don't pick these scriptures. God picks them and I bring them out to forth. And God is a great, great creator. And he tells you, when you know, is by testing the spirit by the word of God. And when the God, when people take and singleize or single out a certain scripture and don't put it in context with the rest of the scripture, it becomes null and void. And that's where preaching of, of the fools, preaching of the cross by fools is foolishness. I just want to explain that to you. But he also put it here. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Being too wise, you think you're better than God or you're above God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Okay? <laughs> the foolishness of preaching. Ha! Huh. I know quite a bit of them that, that believe they're, they're preaching the right message. But here, just to show you something. The Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. That's verse 22. And then 23, Paul responds, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. By telling them the truth, it's a stumbling block for the Jews. They can't get over it because there's no way that they can believe that a Messiah has come as a, in the form of man or God as a form of man because it becomes an idol and a falsity. I've already talked to a Jew about this, and I know. I know that's what they believe, and I, it confirms what I'm reading here. And the Greeks, they, they, it's foolishness to them. They can't figure it out. They can't fathom in their head. And that's the Roman Catholic that they're talking about, the Greeks. But unto them, which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Both Jew and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Okay, and I love this here where Paul really, really nails it home. In 25, he says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Meaning, if God's being foolish, it's above what our knowledge can comprehend. <laughs> and th that, I love that one too. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. And his strength, is his weakest moment is still stronger than ours. Than our strongest moment. So, praise the Lord on that one. And I love this one. For you see your calling, brethren. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. When you see your calling, he's not calling the proud. He's not calling the wealthy. He's not calling the millionaires. He's calling you, children of God. He's calling you to study and show thyself approved and teach and preach the word of God to people. He calls you. He chose you. Then you better do it. If you hear God talking, then you better get out there and speak the word of God. Amen. I'm sorry, I'm getting into a rant here. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, Jesus. And I love this. He says, he chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. That's us. That's us, children. Us simple-minded Christians. Us single point of view Christians, the ones that are on that straight and narrow path and they're not going to let somebody deceive them and take them off that and they're going to call them to action. They're going to call them as they see it. God will use us 
to point out the errors in their way and prove our points by their own condemnation of their own scriptures that they're choosing out of context. <clears throat> and base things of the world and things which are despised. Okay, I love that because he's saying that. And then he says here, hath God chosen? Yes, or yea. And things which are not to, which are not to bring not to things that are. So he's saying that us preaching, which we have nothing, we're going to bring to nothing to, of things that exist now by our preaching of God, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Our self shouldn't glory, but our spirit should. Amen. But in him, but of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctifications and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Not in yourself. Don't have self-glory. Have the glory in the Lord. Who praise the Lord. <clears throat> oh, this one will definitely be in the, um, this scripture will definitely, definitely make the YouTube page today. It'll make my description today. This one's worthy. I mean, this one's worth my time. Because it's just, I, I don't mean to be mean. I don't mean to sound crazy. But, you know, I am in a righteous rant. Somebody called one of my rants and raves, and I mean, I was borderline sinning on that rant as righteous because I put it out there in the way that God said to put it out there. He says he will prepare you a path to go. Follow that path. Stay on that path to righteousness. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, YouTube. I'll tell you right now, God has just been working miracles in me in the last few days. And, you know, Wakeus and a lot of the brothers, I mean, uh, Brother Miguel, um, the sister in England, uh, people that I've known for a long time that have just said a couple things on my thing and I never hear from again. You know, maybe they are monitoring. And, you know, if they are, I pray that they learn that what I'm doing is I'm not attacking somebody. I'm attacking the falseness of their statements and the ignorance of their statements through discernment. I know what's right, and I know when my spirit says yes. And when it says, whoa, wait a minute, back off of that. That's the point I'm getting at. We can't keep sitting there bashing everybody that has an opinion, but we need to point them on the path of righteousness. And how we do that is the word of God. It isn't me. It's the word of God and the voice of God through the voice, through my body, and be a message to you. And I, whatever I hear, I have to learn it first, and I have to decipher it, uh, decipher it before I can share it with you guys. If I am not first partaker, how can I then give it to you and understand it? I can't. And that's what the Bible says for teachers. That's in Acts, and that's also in Romans, I believe, and Corinthians. And that's something you want to look up. And you want to know how to be a good pastor? To be a leader, you must first be led. To teach, one must be taught. Think about that. For one to be led, one to become a leader, one must first be led. For those that wish to teach, they must be first taught. Paul wrote that. Anointed by the Holy Spirit, he wrote that because that's just what Jesus says. And, you know, they got the joke, they've got the old thing of WWJD. I love that. What would Jesus do? My sister found a, a picture online. It says, what would Bubba do? Well, Bubba's my nickname. Well, you know, what would Bubba do? I would follow what Jesus would do. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm going to flip that back around. What would Bubba do? He's going to follow Jesus. And he's going to serve God. And he's going to call you out if you're wrong but he's going to do it in love and righteous discernment, not judgment, because only one can judge, and that's God. But we can discern where we're in error, where our brother's in error. We first got to clear our mind and pray for forgiveness before we approach that brother. Make sure your heart is pure and you have prayed and you've asked God for forgiveness in Jesus' name. And that's when you are able to discern Ask for the Holy Spirit, and God will give you the Holy Spirit. Ask for your gifts. God will give them to you. 
I just praise the Lord. And may the Lord bless you and keep you till the next time we talk. In Jesus' name, amen.